All right, this is Tommy with AAA Exterminating Company. Monday night about seven o'clock, and as usual, just hanging out in crawl spaces. Got a pretty interesting moisture situation that we see quite a bit. So I wanted to kind of uh, make a video on this and show you guys what uh, some of the different issues look like that we come across. So check this out. Okay, so in this crawl space, as you can see, it's got no vapor barrier. We kind of preach on this a lot. You really need to have all these crawl spaces in the south. You really need to have at least vapor barriers, at least stop that evaporation. Because what goes on is literally hundreds of gallons of water come up through the ground and up through the house. And they just make their way all the time. Just waters can constantly just evaporating up. And the vapor exchange is going through this floor system into the house, making things wet, getting growth on the wood, high moisture readings. Now, this particular situation is kind of interesting. We see this a lot. You see, around the outside of the house, you've got your rim joists. So, on the other side of that area there is the outside. So, what goes on is that's one of the colder parts of the floor system because it's on the outside of the house. So very often this moisture that's evaporating up from the ground is making its way to the outside and hitting that colder um, surface of that's the wood on the rim joist. It's colder because it's on the outside wall. And so the, the moisture will just accumulate on that rim joist. So very often it's, it can be kind of confusing. A lot of people think that this moisture might be coming from the outside. It might be, you know, water penetrating somewhere. But a lot of these houses very often will have all, the whole rim joist all the way around the house have this moisture like this and that's the reason is because that area is one of the first areas that that moisture hits the colder surface of that wood because it's on the outside and uh, so every year you know you, you get this it builds up more and more and you get it being soaking wet there and just for an example if you look right here we'll do a moisture level say right here so a little bit away from it we got high moisture what is this about 24 percent or so but then look just how wet it is here it's literally just soaking wet you know spiking you can see water on the wood actually so you can actually see the wood is actually wet so that's what's going on all that evaporation is coming up and it's hitting this area so a couple things need to be done with a situation like this for one, those probably should have been insulated a little bit better. When they installed this insulation, they probably didn't push it up against that rim joist good enough. So it probably didn't insulate that area good enough. But of course, the main issue is the, is the vapor barrier. Now, once it gets like this and we've got, uh, you know, growth and stuff accumulating on the floor joist, now you got to go a little bit further. A lot of this insulation is going to be have, having to be taken down, replaced. We're going to have to go through and uh, expose all this band all the way around the house or all this rim, rim joist all the way around the house and uh, clean it scrub it down make sure we get all the growth off of there then we're going to want to close up the vents with a um, with foam board do a good vapor barrier and install a professional dehumidifier that's kind of the minimum you know uh, an encapsulation would probably be great here uh, but you can you can achieve the same thing with just doing a closed crawl space with a good dehumidifier is what I suggest here um, so that's what's going to need to happen on a house like this. But it can be fixed. Luckily, it doesn't seem like this has uh, damaged the wood so far that I can see too much. There are some damaged areas, um, but I think if we dry it out properly, we'll be able to save it from too much issue. Of course, that's not for me to say. That's for a contractor to say. Um, but once we clean it up and dry it out, you'll, have, you'll know a little bit more what you got. Now, another point, though, that wood is extremely saturated. So you, whenever you install a dehumidifier in a situation like this, you cannot just crank it all the way up and, and dry it out fast. You have to take your time drying this out. It should take, it should take at least several days, maybe a week or two to get this dry. Um, so you might want to put a DHU in here, set it at more of a, of a, you know, maybe 65 or so to bring it down slowly, then slowly get it down to 50. Um, but you're going to want to do that in stages. You do not want to dry this all up in one day, running a dehumidifier wide open because you can um, really cause some problems when that band is soaking wet as it is. So a lot of consideration needs to be made towards that. But it is the kind of thing that can be dealt with, and it's actually very, very common. Um, so I would say rule number one, if you have a crawl space 
and you do not have a vapor barrier or your vapor barrier is in really bad shape, it doesn't look good, you should definitely call um, someone to come out there and make a look at it. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help you with AAA exterminating, but uh, get someone out there. There's a lot of uh, crawl space guys who know a little bit about this. Get someone out there to take a look. Most of us will take a look for you for free if you're worried about it and uh, give you an idea of where you wanna, what you want to do. But you definitely don't want to have to deal with this when you're trying to sell your house, that's for sure.